morning, everyone. This is Morgan at CO2 Meter. I am very excited today to go over a little bit about one of our most popular devices, the Remote CO2 Storage Safety 3 Alarm. Today, specifically, we are going to go into how to change and alter alarm settings that are user configurable, as this is a question we get often, and depending on a customer's use case, there is the option to change these settings. Now, without further ado, let's get on into it. All right, everyone, so before we get started into understanding and knowing how to change those settings, I did just wanna go over a brief overview on the device, the Remote CO2 Storage Safety 3 Alarm. Now, this monitor is designed to detect carbon dioxide levels in ambient air in order to protect employees and customers. As you may know, CO2 monitors are required in most jurisdictions by code. When high concentrations of CO2 in a confined space appear, they are very dangerous and they may lead to health problems. These problems can range from headaches, fatigue, asphyxiation, and even fatality. Now, this monitor does comply with IFC, NFPA, and NBIC requirements for monitoring, and it features three audible and visual alarms with relays. These relays are triggered at 5,000 ppm, time-weighted average, 15,000 ppm, and 30,000 ppm. And they can control a ventilation fan or signal the fire panel to send an alarm to the fire department or monitoring company should a CO2 leak occur. Now to get started, we are going to go ahead and look at how to turn off the latch function. Very important to note with this device, in order to change any of the alarm settings, the latch function has to be off. It's required that this is on at default when you do receive your device. So we're gonna go over how to turn this off so we can continue with changing the alarms. In order to do so, you are going to press the up and enter button for 10 seconds. You're then going to change to advanced mode by pressing the mode button and choosing lat mode. When you see lat mode on the LCD screen, you will then press the up and down arrow buttons and scale through until you see latch mode. We're going to click the down button and have this appear as off. Once it shows lat off on your screen, you're going to press enter to save. Right, everyone, now that we have our latch off, we also need to make sure that our alarm level lock is off. Just like our latch function, we do have to send all of the remote CO2 storage safety three alarm devices with this alarm level lock on as default. You cannot adjust the alarm levels again if this is locked. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we unlock this setting. In order to do so, our next step is going to press the up and enter button for 10 seconds once more. We're then going to change to advanced mode by pressing the mode button and choosing alarm mode. From here, you're going to press the up and down arrows and we're gonna scale through until we see ALM level, lock or unlock. By clicking the down arrow again, you should have alarm A and unlock on your LCD screen. Once you see this, you're going to press enter to save. Now your alarm level lock should be unlocked and we can go forward with changing the alarms. All right, everyone, we just went over how to turn that latch off, how to turn the alarm level lock off, and now we're actually going to go into a few custom settings before we get to changing the alarms that many customers might want to alter. Um, those are going to be the barometric compensation, the temperature, as well as checking communication for the device. So first, in order to change that barometric compensation to on or off, the default is usually on. Um, the unit usually automatically compensates for barometric pressure and altitude, but again, depending on your use case, some people do choose to turn this on or off. To do so, you'll just simply press the up and enter button for 10 seconds as before. We'll change to advanced mode by pressing the mode button and choose barrow mode. Then you'll press the up and down buttons and you'll scale through until you see barrow mode and turn this on or off depending on your preference. Once you have that on on or off, you'll click the enter button to save. Additionally, you can also customize the temperature unit depending obviously on where you are in your location. To do so, you're simply going to press the up arrow and you'll be able to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Just like temperature, you can also change your barometric reading. If you select the down arrow, you can switch between HPA and INHG. 
Aside from just these custom settings, many customers do look to test the overall communication link between your standard unit and your remote unit. So in order to do that, you're going to press the mode button until the diag icon is flashing. After you see the diag icon flashing, you'll press the enter button. You'll then see the sensor unit's five LEDs blink and the buzzer will sound, letting you know that it is communicating with our main remote display device. Now the remote display has five LEDs that will also blink just like our main sensor unit and the buzzer will sound simultaneously. In the end, you should have two devices, both blinking and buzzering, letting you know that you are ready to install your device. All right, everyone, now that we've shown you a little bit on how to change some overall settings, such as turning that latch function off, turning the alarm level off, and configuring some of the customized settings, such as temperature, barometric pressure, and communication, now we're going to go into how to change those two alarm settings that are user configurable. In order to do so, we're first going to look at alarm level two. Since our latch function is unlocked, we're going to press the mode button until we see the alarm level two and CO2 icons flashing. You'll press the up and down arrows and you'll scale through until you see which level you would like depending on your use case. You can choose between 5,000, 1%, 1.5%, 2%, 2.5%, and 3% alarm levels. Once you've selected your specific level, you'll press the enter button again to save the setting after the selection or you'll press mode to quit the setting and return to the main menu. Hi everyone, now that we've gone over how to change that latch to off as well as the alarm level to off, we're going to go ahead and get into setting both the alarm 2 and alarm 3 settings. To set the alarm 2, that's the second CO2 alarm level parameter, this is user configurable again. In order to change the setting, you're going to press the mode button until the alarm 2 and CO2 icons flash. Once you see both both of those flashing, you're going to press the enter button. The alarm 2 icon should show on the LCD and you should see that the default AL2 level is set at 1.5%. In order to change this, we're going to go ahead and press the up and down arrow and scroll through until you see the different alarm level settings. You can choose between 5,000, 1%, 1.5%, 2%, 2.5%, and 3% settings. Once you've chosen the setting that you would like, you'll press the enter button again to save this setting, or you can press the mode to quit the setting. Moving on to setting alarm level three, this is gonna be our third CO2 alarm level parameter. This is also user configurable. We are going to go through the same steps as similar to AL2. We're going to press the mode button until the AL3 and CO2 icon is flashing. We're then going to press the enter button. You should see the AL3 icon shown on the LCD and the default should be set at 3%. From here, you're gonna use those up and down arrow keys again to go through and choose your selection. You can choose between 2%, 2.5%, 3%, 3.5%, and 4% alarm levels, depending on your use case and environment. Once you've chosen the select level that you would like, you'll press the enter button again to save the setting, or you can press the mode button to quit the setting. And there you have it. All right, everyone, there you have it. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and demonstration on how to change and configure the alarm settings of the remote CO2 storage safety three alarm. We appreciate you for taking time to watch this video and hope that it was both informative and useful in your product. Should you have any other questions or concerns regarding the remote CO2 storage safety three alarm, you can always find more demonstration videos on our YouTube channel at CO2 meter, or for more information, you can always contact us at www.co2meter.com. Thank you again. Until next time, we'll see you then.